Hello there. It is time for another biology lesson. And today we'll be looking at the topic classification of living things, the introductory part. Now the objective of this lesson is to enable learners to define and describe the term classification. State the benefits of classification of living organisms. Describe the history of classification of living organisms. Describe taxonomy and the two branches of taxonomy. Describe binomial nomenclature and give a brief description of the, taxonom of the taxonomic hierarchy of living organisms. Now we are going to start with this question, what is classification? Now classification is the placement or grouping of things based on common characteristics. Therefore, classification of living things is the placement or grouping of organisms based on features they possess in common. Now, the science of grouping or placing organisms into groups is called taxonomy. Organisms are grouped or classified based on features they share in common. As you can see here, another definition of classification is placing things into categories based on similar characteristics. And taxonomy is the science of classifying organisms. Now, moving along, we are going to look at the importance and benefits of classification. Now, to place or put every organism in a systematic order or specific group, that's one benefit of classification. For easy identification of organisms that are similar, to indicate or show the relationship between different categories of living organisms, to show evolutionary trends in different groups of living organisms, to trace geographical distribution of living organisms, for easy reference, for easy research and study, and to keep accurate records of organisms. Now looking at the importance of classification, it helps in the determination of characteristic features of living organisms. It helps in the grouping of organisms, identification of organisms, understanding diversity, understanding the interrelationship among different organisms, prediction of line evolution, nomenclature of organisms, and ease for other applied biological science uh, biological sciences now moving along we'll be looking at the history of classification now the first person that we have uh, that we know of that attempted to classify living organisms was aristotle who was a greek philosopher who lived more than 2000 years ago now as i said he was the first to document that living things could be classified now he classified uh, living things based on their habitats in other words he called uh, some organisms, land organisms, air organisms, water organisms. He also classified plants, you know. So he was the first to classify living organisms. Now, this man right here is called Carolus Linnaeus or Carl Linnaeus. He lived from 1707 to 1778. He created the hierarchy of classification we use today. He's usually termed the father of taxonomy. Now, specifically, he is responsible for the two name system or the binomial system given to each organism on earth. The first name comes from the genus, while the second name is the species. We'll look at that in detail. Now, here we have a timeline of uh, the contribution of scientists who have uh, classified uh, living organisms. Now, Carlos Linnaeus in 1735. Uh, gave the two kingdom classification. He classified all living organisms into plants and animals. While uh, Mr. Elko right here in 1866 gave three uh, kingdom classification. We have the protist, plants, and animals. So he classified all living organisms under three kingdoms. Now in 1925, we have uh, Mr. Charlton right here who gave two empires of organisms. One as prokaryotes and the other as eukaryotes. In 1938, Copeland classified all living organisms into four kingdoms. We have the Nera, the Protist, the Plant, and the Animal. Whereas in 1969, Whitaker gave the five kingdom classification. We have the Monera, the Protist, the Fungi, the Plant, and the Animals. In 1990, Wosey gave the three domains, three domains, which are the Eubacteria, Archaea, and the Eucharist. Now moving along, we'll be looking at the concept of taxonomy. 
taxonomy is the branch of biology that deals with systematics and nomenclature. Nomenclature deals with naming organisms while systematic deals with placing organisms into groups. The act of classifying organisms was introduced or pioneered by a Swedish naturalist called Carolus Linnaeus or Carl Linnaeus who lived between 1707 and 1778. He assigned a two-part naming system for every or two-part name for every organism. The first part is the generic genus or general name while the second part is the specific species or special name. The generic name begins with a capital letter while the specific name starts with a small letter. The system, the system of assigning a two-part name to an organism is called binomial nomenclature. Now these scientific names are written in italics or are underlined separately. For instance, human beings, the scientific name for human beings is Homo sapiens as you can see here. An house fly is called Mosca domestica, while the dog is Canis domestica. Now, as you can see right here, this organism right here has a common name tiger. And the reason why uh, binomial nomenclature is very, very important is because you know these particular organisms in various countries or cultures may have its own common name. So, in order to be able to identify, you know. Or to be able to identify the specific organism that we are talking about that's why we have the scientific name for the organism so all around the world anywhere you mention panthera tigris you know that we are talking about the tiger irrespective of the culture or the country or the language we know that we are talking about the tiger so the panthera tigris is the scientific name for the tiger the panthera is the genus name while the tigris is the species name as you can see that it is italicized here but if it is not italicized, you need to underline the name in particular. So moving along, we'll be looking at the taxonomic hierarchy of living organisms. Now, the system of classifying classification of living things used today is based on the one introduced by Carolus Linnaeus. Living things are first split into the kingdoms, as you can see right here. The most, the most inclusive of them is the kingdom do right here in this um, in this diagram we have the domain the domain is the most inclusive followed by kingdom phylum class order family genus species while the most specific is the species and the least specific is the domain so the domain here is the most inclusive and least specific while the species here is the least specific uh, is the least inclusive and the most specific of the taxonomic hierarchy of living things now, living things are first split into kingdoms. That is plant or animal kingdom. We have the monera, the fungi. Uh, we have the monera, the fungi, and we have the protist. Now, the kingdoms are divided into a large number of smaller groups called the phylum in animals and division in plants. All members of the same phylum or division have certain features in common. Each phylum or division is broken into classes and each class is further divided into orders and orders into families families into genera or genus and genera into species therefore the arrangement of living organisms in this hierarchy from the highest to the lowest level is as follows now as you can see right here uh, for human beings who, um, who have the scientific name of homo sapiens now you can see how we distinguish them under domain kingdom phylum class other family genus species now for for man under the falls on he falls under the domain eukarya in kingdom he falls under the kingdom animalia under phylum he falls under chordata under class he falls under mammalia under order he falls under primates under um, in family he is found in the family of hominidae under genus is homo another species is sapiens that's why the man has the scientific name homo sapiens now moving along you can see right here exactly um, what i said in the previous slide now starting from species down to kingdom or starting from kingdom you can see that man falls under the animal kingdom these are organisms able to move on their own under phylum it falls under chordates that means animals with a backbone under class it falls under mammals 
these are cordates with four or hair and milk glands under order man falls under primates those are mammals with collar bones and grasping fingers under family he falls under the hominidae or hominids which are primates with relatively flat faces and three dimensional vision under genus it falls under homo that is hominids with upright posture and large brains and under species he is he falls under sapiens it's called homo sapiens that is members of the genus homo with a height and uh, with a height forehead and thin skull bones now looking at this uh, picture right here you can see we have various um, living organisms you have the grizzly bear the black bear um, the giant panda the red fox um, abed squirrel coral snake and sea star these all fall under the kingdom animalia but once we go under the phylum chordata you can see that starfish uh, sea star no longer qualifies so these are all the organisms from the first set of organisms that fall under the phylum chordata now sea star is no longer among them now if you move down to the class of mammalia you can see that the coral snake uh, will be out of the equation altogether why because it has another class it falls under another class so you can see that you have five of these organisms under the class mammalia now if you move down to the other carnivora you can see that there are only four organisms that qualify while the abbot squirrel you know is not under the other carnivora so that is why it's no longer part of the group now if you move down from order to the family Ocidae, you'll find out that the red fox will not be found in this particular family of Ocidae. so you can see that you have only the grizzly bear the black bear and the giant panda that falls under the family Ocidae. now if you go down to genus ossos you can see that the giant panda has been um, has been disqualified it doesn't fall under the genus ossos right here only two of these organisms the grizzly bear and the black bear falls under the ossos now under this species ossos actors you have only the grizzly bear so you can see that the kingdom animalia includes all these animals so as you move down from kingdom to species you can see that the kingdom is much more inclusive while the species as you go down it becomes less inclusive and it becomes more specific as you can see right here using these examples that you see here now moving along we have come to the end of today's lesson let's take a quick look at the summary classification of living things is, is the placement or grouping of organisms based on features they possess in common the science of grouping or placing organisms into groups is called taxonomy the act of classifying organisms was introduced or pioneered by a Swedish naturalist called Carl Linnaeus or Carolus Linnaeus who lived within the period 1707 to 1778. Now the system of assigning a two-part name to an organism is called binomial nomenclature. Taxonomic hierarchy is the process of arranging various organisms into successive levels of the biological classification either in a decreasing or an increasing order from kingdom to species or from species to kingdom in this system of classification kingdom is always ranked the highest followed by division class order family genus and species now before we go i want to pause this video and i want you to answer the question in this assessment and please don't forget to like share and subscribe and i'll see you again in the next lesson